Welcome back to another wonderful and fascinating episode of Loathsome Things. Yep. <laughs> Always easy to say the Still podcast can't. that you're listening to. Still can't say it. Can't say Loathsome Things. <laughs> can't say it. We'll be saying it thousands of more times. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, it's so good. And so we are, uh, Josh is me, and also the one that's here that's not me is John. That's me. Yep. <laughs> and together, we have watched at least uh, several times the movie Intersect. <laughs> several times more than it should have been watched. <laughs> it comes in at almost exactly two hours long, and so I know that I have spent now... At least six hours of my life watching this movie. Oh my god, me too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it, it, it is such a turd. <laughs> Spoiler alert: We oh, don't yeah. recommend it. <laughs> or I guess spoiler alert: It's a turd. Oh my god. <laughs> um, An overlong, bloated nightmare. Yep, yep. It's uh, it's. A Lovecraftian time travel movie with strong atheist tones and the production values of a Christian movie. Yeah. Yeah. And the acting ability of a like a children's TV show or something. It's Yep, yeah. <sighs> it is it is famously uh I, I would say famously, I don't know if it actually is, but it is it is starring two what appear to be by their IMDP imdb page two out of work actors and one active voice actor as the main cast and wow. also james morrison who who uh does a good job in it but uh, yes the only actor in the movie that isn't terrible yeah yeah television and some movies character actor man uh james morrison shows up uh way too late in this movie uh immediately dies spoiler mm -hmm. <laughs> and then shows up more <laughs> yeah, because yeah. this movie is a time travel movie and the director thought to himself at one point hey you know what would be neat and then <laughs> went with it <laughs> man hiding in there somewhere is an is a totally unoriginal but but halfway decent concept Oh yeah, yeah. There, there are ideas. I will say one of the times that I watched this movie, I was uh, suffering many of the side effects of the second vaccine dose, mm. including a fever of 102 degrees. Watching it in that state, I was like, wow, this is still terrible, but at least I see what he was trying to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so get yourself a fever and then just go to bed. Don't watch this. <laughs> Don't watch this movie. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, man. That, well, let's dig in because it was, yeah. there's just so much to destroy. All right. So uh, go, go get yourself a beverage or whatever. Uh, don't go watch this movie and then come back and we will do the full spoilers. Yeah. John, what are the spoilers? Uh, everybody sucks. Yeah, everybody sucks. Everybody uh, sucks. Let's see. What would be the spoilers? Um, I think everyone dies, maybe. Essentially, everybody kind of dies. It's a convoluted mess. Yeah. Uh, people die, but then don't really die, but then go ahead and die later. Yeah, yeah. Or or previous, or who knows, because time travel. Yeah, one person dies at exactly the beginning of the movie, and then again, all the way at the end of the movie. That's Caitlin. Yeah. Jeez. She gets exploded. It's messed up because... It's such a pleasure to see these people die, and then they come back. Yeah, yeah especially Nate. 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 Nate, oh. <laughs> Nate had the best death scenes. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> you wanted him to die so bad, and so, you know, you get the satisfaction of seeing him die. And then he comes back, and you have to, you know, wish for him to die all over again, which the movie gives you. God, you know, I don't think... I don't think I would I don't think I've ever seen an actor in my life that I wanted to kill more than that guy. It's his he does such weird lip stuff whenever he's being smug at people. Yeah, he talks out of the side of his mouth. Yeah, and and he's like like pushing his lips out. It, oh my god. I feel bad 
actor guy, you know, you're fine. I'm sure part of it was that this movie was incompetently directed. Um, I can only imagine that this movie was incompetently directed. Yeah, you're not you're not fine, dude. You're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you need to re- you need to like get a better job, bro, because <laughs> you suck. If you look at his IMDb history, it looks like he was actively trying to not be an actor for <laughs> several years before this. Yeah, he should have given in to that impulse because Abe Ruthless is terrible. Yeah, that's right. Abe Ruthless, not porn star, just actor man, Abe Ruthless. He's just like I know what he was going for, and you know, I mean, he was, you know, he's like the. They're all they're all scientists, and they're they've invented a time portal, and they're trying to get it to work, and it's not working right. So hold up, hold up, no, 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 no. What you need to, you need to take one step back. They're not scientists that invented a time portal. They are, they are science uh, students oh, and associates right. at Miskatonic University. Yeah, in the, their brand new temporal sciences building. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Miskatonic University, the university whose edifice had plastic letters on it. <laughs> yeah, fucking dick eater couldn't even get real letters. <laughs> and they have like the grossest hallways. <laughs> it's like they went to fucking Hobby Lobby and got the cheapest letters they could find, and then glued them to a wall. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh wow, this is great. Maybe you should have saved a little bit of that 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 fucking temporal penis examination wing for <laughs> for your lettering. Jesus Christ. Oh God. Um yeah, it's so bad. Everything looks like garbage. Everything sounds like garbage. I, I watched this on the computer with my headphones. I also watched it on the TV. Yeah. On the TV, at least you can't tell that. I don't know how most movies are filmed. I would assume that most movies are filmed with like, they, they use a boom mic and they actually record the sound in the scene where the filming is going on. Correct. This, this movie, you can tell that that didn't happen, that there was no boom mic and that they just filmed the visual of the scene and then had all of these people read their lines in a sound booth. Yeah. It, I, the only thing I can think is that, um, uh... I mean, it, it, it clearly was shot with a digital camera. I mean, obviously most films are now, but um, but it 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 looks like one of those cheap digital cameras. Like the it, it's one of those films where the clarity is way the clarity level is way too high, but there's just no character to the image. Yeah, bad and, lighting. Know, yeah, like you can see nose like nose hair like lining the edge of someone's nostril, and you don't need to see that. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you can and, you can see how much makeup they put on them because their skin is always perfectly dry. Yeah, and all the, all the like saliva streamers that's always <laughs> yeah, in so everybody's cool. mouth, <laughs> and like the connect the mole competition where like oh man, they apparently you weren't allowed to even work on the movie unless you had like forty or fifty visible <laughs> moles all over your body. It was so repellent. <laughs> God. <laughs> And the main actor has very interesting planes on the bridge of his nose that are, <laughs> would you know, like normally, like that, you know, it's it's fine. People have different things, but it is always in the center of the shot. Is like whatever is going on. He has like a diamond dime nose shape. Oh God, he Fast. looks like yeah. He has a uh, he has the uh, Danny DeVito as the penguin nose. <laughs> Oswald Cobblepot. Yeah, Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> but in real fucking life. And uh, uh. if he had been a decent actor, I would have been okay. Or if his voice didn't sound like... I, what, like, his voice was terrible. <laughs> how, how could that guy ever make it, in, like, in any movie ever with a voice like that? It's just unbearable bad he, like he is a very successful voice actor and i think what it is is that normally he doesn't have to act like a a confused moody putz really he, he's yeah. a voice actor he's a famous uh like maybe not famous but he's a very successful voice actor voice actor all over the place uh cartoons and video games galore i 
guess he was doing what they wanted him to do because that voice was terrible. Oh yeah, no. Th- there is no way that all of this movie it rests solely on the poor performances of the actors. Once oh, you no, take no. everything into account, it is obvious what that Gus Halwerda is just not good at this. No, he's a complete and total hack. Yeah. His only other movie is a documentary where he followed Richard Dawkins and Lawrence Krauss around the debate circuit. Oh god. And uh and then he was like, hmm, I've done a documentary about atheism. What should I do next? Perhaps a two-hour-long sci-fi horror film about time travel and Cthulhu. And Richard Dawkins can be the voice of the computer. Yeah. And I can get Lawrence Krauss to just be some random professor in one scene. Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> I... <laughs> I mean, like, you know, if you stripped away the worst elements, if the even just the voice acting was okay, it would have been, or the voices, it would have been better, it would have improved it dramatically. And yeah. if you had stripped the running time down to get a lot of that that second and third act bloat out of there, because it, it just really drags after the first act. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole movie drags, but I mean, it's... It gets to that point where you're just like you're, every five seconds you're looking at the clock, like God damn it, when is this fucking thing over? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was several of my notes. Was exactly that. Like, how yeah. does the like, I put it there? How does this movie still have thirty minutes left? To go? Oh my God, every like, and and every trope, every stupid fucking trope that's in every horror memory time time travel Cthulhu. I like. Every one of them is packed into this movie. Oh, yeah. No, the entire dialogue. He basically just got the book 1001 cliche movie lines and just just poured everything he could out of it to compose the script because it is it is just all in there. And I I quoted all of them. I I wrote (laughs) all of them down. It's mostly Nate. It's not all Nate, but it's mostly Nate saying just the worst, worst things that uh, guy, that guy, not only is he ugly, but his voice is terrible and he can't act. What the fuck was that guy doing on the screen? I don't know. I don't know. And I don't know. I, I like I like that uh, he's like he's the third wheel friend that is supposed in their eyes is a total badass and is, oh, good old Nate, you know, like he's the best of us or whatever. And he's his character is the worst. <laughs> the actor is the worst. It's just terrible all around. He's like always too drunk, being an <sighs> asshole, ruining shit, committing suicide, murdering people. You know that guy, like that is he is totally a mass murderer. Even as a kid, he like murders the fuck out of another child. He he fucking waylays that kid <laughs> with a plank. Just <laughs> Like it's a baseball bat, yeah. just clocks him. That's his heroic moment. Is he he surprise hits a kid in the head with the edge of a piece of timber? <laughs> he crushes his skull. Yeah, because he's a kid, hero. Yeah, the kid even makes like horrible noises, like permanent brain damage noises, <laughs> while he's crawling around on the ground, not being okay yeah that was a little upsetting yeah probably yeah oh yeah no all of the most upsetting scenes in this movie are nate scenes <laughs> oh i don't know i don't know when when abner licks that <laughs> woman's that, as a child licks her face and then as an adult that was just absolutely repellent that's true that's true the bully named abner does as a child do a little bit of sexual assault on a fellow child female uh, and that's not a great thing to have in your movie. Oh God, it's, uh, all of it was so bad. Like yeah. it's it just well, let's yeah, let's yeah, let's but start to break it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 go through in order. Yeah, movie, all of it was really, but don't but don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, because it's watch. terrible. <laughs> you know, honestly, I could I could see this being the type of thing like uh, like uh, Troll Two, where people watch it because it's so quotably nauseating. Yeah, I did kind of I did kind of love it because yeah, of that. Yeah, like I could I could see this being at a at like Alamo Draft House with a quote along, and people will have like inflatable things that they throw and beat each other with. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so the movie opens 
on the coolest scene in the whole movie and everything else will suck more than this. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the opening CGI, the whole CGI opening was kick-ass. Yeah. It's like space, but like weird space with like either like tentacles or it's just like, this is how the nebula works. It's all big and gross and cool. And you're zooming around through it. Uh, and it's, it's awesome. It is really cool. Even though the last shot of it is it finds like the middle of all of this crazy tentacle business. And you look at one really dumb looking CGI eyeball that's sticking out of the middle of all of this dumb nonsense. He has a giant Cthulhu type sort of like old god eye thing yeah yeah and then that's over and you immediately go to main character faceted nose guy who is alternating between sad face and confused face which is the full emotional range that he will display for the entire rest of the movie Uh and he is holding a bleeding woman and also looking at a crazy creepy spider that is looking at him from the opposite direction And he's having confusion and he is having sadness. And the bleeding girl looks up at him and says, remember. Remember. (laughs) (laughs) And if that is confusing, don't worry. Yes. Yes. And so he, he, of course, what does he do? He cries like a little bitch. (laughs) Just like, just like, just lets it go. Yeah. And then he's he's got this thing in his hand, this like stupid locket thing that, which of course is gonna, you know, is gonna come up later. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a locket, but spherical. Yeah. <laughs> and then it cuts to him, like yeah, obviously, at some point in the past, he's in bed with this chick whose hair color changes from blonde to brown at like the just the drop of a pin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, this movie is a movie that is a flashbacks within flashbacks style movie mm-hmm. where you can tell sometimes they intentionally like indicated, hey, this is a flashback and other times forgot to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of good stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, So, yeah, so he's in bed with this lady and they have a whole scene conversation that takes forever. Yeah, it was uh, it was riveting. <laughs> yeah, like here, yeah. Here's what I put, and this is these are my entire notes. Take this tone. So okay, so she says, "Remember," dies. Ryan ass dick cries terribly. Lock it. Lock it. Cut to them in bed. Gross. I hate them. <laughs> Fuck Nate in the photo. That's that's that's. Those are how my whole notes went for this movie. Yeah, this uh, the the this scene does establish the the motif uh, or the theme of looking at photographs in which people that we don't know about are yeah. in the photographs with the people we do know about. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, look, there they are. Who's that fucking guy? Yeah. So, so the photo that he looks at is the two people in this movie that we are aware of at all, and also some real shitty looking guy between them. <laughs> Being some kind of gross third wheel guy, great. I hope we never meet him. He's the entire rest of the movie. <laughs> That's correct. Oh my god! Uh, uh, and then there is possibly one of the shittiest scenes in the movie, but definitely not. But possibly it's the shower scene yeah. where we see him in the shower, obviously just jerking it, right. but. There's a scene of him close up with water dripping over him. And then another shot from outside the shower. It's obviously not the the same shower. The back, the tile is a completely different color. (laughs) It's just him jerking it in one shower. And then we're in someone else's bathroom somewhere else. And whoever is in that shower is drawing nonsense on the steam that's building up on the shower door. it's supposed to be that he's not thinking about the math that he's doing on the shower door but it's obviously not that that's happening oh my god it's so bad (laughs) so bad yeah it's an effectively creepy scene because obviously we're like watching someone try to do dumb math in the shower (laughs) yeah jesus god and it's not him no Uh. yeah 
Whew. And then it, right away, we're establishing the different different time periods are treated with, I don't know, so, sort of like different palettes. Like one of their favorite palettes is the bluish, bluish kind of gray, like really dark, like you can't see anything because there's no fucking lights anywhere. <laughs> Look. Or the day for night shot where they're like crying in a cemetery and it's everything looks blue. It's yeah. fucking horrible. There's some there's some real real interesting ways that they decided to cope with time in this movie. Uh, yeah. Oh god. And yeah, uh he gets out of the shower. We see that he has a uh baby grand piano in his kitchen. Yeah, well, we see him shirtless, by the way, which was terrible. Oh, yeah, it's good. Not as terrible as when Nate is shirtless, though. Yeah, that's their... Oh, yeah, or pantsless. Yeah, yeah, just facing people saying things dick out. Just a camera full of crack. Oh, my God. Who who smuggles a bottle of Jim Beam into the bar? I know. Nate. Yeah, Nate, that guy. Nate, human scum. Yeah, but we get ahead of ourselves. Right. <laughs> um, this is where we finally figure out that the audio track is not properly synced with the video because Nate has a phone conversation and the his lips will be moving, sounds won't be coming out. It's terrible. <laughs> Didn't even try. Yeah, yeah. They, they did not hire someone that knew what they were doing. They were like, no, I'm a video guy, not an audio guy. Well, can you do this? I can see. <laughs> I can give it a shot. Yeah. It's like us doing this podcast. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> um, it's real bad. Also, this is where you first start hearing the orchestral soundtrack to this movie. It never ends. It never ends, and it's amazing. <laughs> it's just, there's just scenes where it's like, just the music sounds like something's going to happen and nothing fucking happens. It's just. It's yep. just, it's like every second of the music is meant to be compelling and it's like compelling what? Like nothing's fucking going on. Yep. Yeah. No, it it's, it's great. I feel like the people, the, the conductor and orchestra that worked with this just recorded it in one take upon their first viewing, like as they were watching it, they're like, all right, now maybe something like this. Uh, and they're like, no, that's fine. We're not doing a second take. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm sure they just got their music off like off some fucking royalty free podcast music site or something. Probably. Yeah, because it's it's all over the place. There's even like at, at times there's like weird 1990s Steven Spielberg movie style nonsense, silly music. I don't know. I don't know. This movie's all over the place. It's crazy because it's it's clear that that Gus Holwerda put a lot of work into this thing. I mean, yeah. he, he obviously, you know, he, he obviously really, he really tried, but when it comes to like actors and acting, I mean, that, that part was just not, it didn't matter. Apparently there were lots of things that didn't matter. Yeah. Like, like rules that they set, set for certain things that break later that with no explanation. I kind of feel like the whole Miskatonic slash, Lovecraftian angle was like something he shoehorned in later. Yeah, it didn't even really fit. That's yeah. true. Just like they shoehorned in that some kid that they grew up with was named Howard Phillips, <laughs> which had nothing to fucking do with anything. Hey, that's like, that's remember when Howard Phillips had to do that in elementary school? <laughs> Who fucking cares? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, this movie about three adult scientists that are learning about time travel is surprisingly a lot about three 12-year-olds who yeah. are learning about friendship for the first time. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, they spend way too long with the kids. Yeah, and, and, it, and it shows up so late in the movie, but then it's like, now it's time for this. <laughs> now this is the movie. Okay, so so back to summarizing this. Is it does he open the box at that point after he gets out of the shower? Uh, he's or is got that the, later. He, he no, I think it's later. He's got the. They do show the marbles in the That's the jar. Funny. 
eight. And like I think what just one marble moves or something. Oh, yeah, there's shit. there's two marbles in the jar and one is like fading in and out of existence a little. It's so stupid. Yeah. Well he gets a he gets a phone call from the lab. That's that's Yeah. J Lab. Yeah. Some there's there's a bomber at J Lab. You need to get here immediately. Yeah. Uh so he, he goes there. There is there are protesters standing behind the yellow police tape. Mm -hmm. uh he also sees what we don't know is nate but later we will know is nate if you watch this movie again which dear god why (laughs) Uh, don't do that yourself yeah he sees time travel nate in the crowd of protesters um and some of his like lab assistants in there they're like here's here's what's going on and then he like crosses the police tape they're like no don't and there's so there's a bomb situation going on in police tape, and there is all of three police officers, yeah, present on the scene. None of them are preventing people from crossing the line, and there are still people in the building just milling about, yeah. and they're not worried about them. But when this guy crosses the line, they they like, hey, stop him! So two the two uniform police officers start chasing him, while the the detective guy, like Captain Pepto Bismol, gets on the <laughs> horn and says, "We've got a situation," and um, we got a runner. Yeah. And so now he's like trying to like be sneaky through the building to get to where the bomber is, while two cops chase him and shoot him. <laughs> what the fuck was that they shoot him (laughs) stop stop guns out shoot (laughs) like wait whoa (laughs) bit of an overreaction there guys yeah there's they they haven't cleared the building there's just other scientists like making their way slowly to the exits (laughs) Like, we don't know who he is, but he's clearly not the bomber since he just fucking showed up and walked into the building. Yeah. (laughs) I also like that to shoot him, they, like, are running after him, pull their guns out, and are just pointing guns at him while running terribly. Yeah. (laughs) Just just manage to wing him on the way out. It's so great. And then he just, all the the way he loses them is he just gets to a door and closes it behind him. And he's like, ah, okay, now I'm safe does the yeah does the lock thing and they can't that that's it they'll never get in ever because he's done that yeah yeah (laughs) these gun happy cops that shoot him even though he's you know white yeah jesus so so then we just aren't there anymore we've now switched scenes yeah yeah we're we're at the cemetery in in one of the worst scenes in the entire film. Yeah, he is running through the world's fakest rain in a cemetery that is mostly composed of trees with just a few gravestones sprinkled around for for effect. And he is in the process of winning the world's worst fake uh wet t-shirt contest. Oh god. <laughs> It's like somebody's holding a, a like somebody's holding a garden hose with their thumb over the thing, like yeah. arcing the water over onto them. That's what it looked like. Yeah, way too much pressure, big fat droplets. <laughs> it obviously doesn't match the fake looking rain of the background. They're completely drenched. Yeah, Caitlin is there too. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, they say more nonsense. It's just like, oh, are you going to... Uh, I don't know. It's so bad. And, yeah, they're uh, arguing over... Like, she wants him to, to to give up on the experiment because it's it's too dangerous or some yeah. shit or something. He's like, they don't have to die. They don't, they don't have to die. Yeah. <laughs> and then one of the best quotes from the whole movie, he says, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It's it really is that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and his I don't know what I'm doing anymore is like accompanied by one of those swift like turn away from the person you're talking to and, <laughs> and glance dramatically away from the scene, but which is near the camera. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Their conversation takes forever. It doesn't make any sense. And Yeah, yeah. He won't and he's not gonna stop the experiment because He's a fucking rogue. Yeah. He's, a rebel. He's a rebel, man. What if we could do... Uh, th- th- I don't... Uh, uh, <laughs> but Caitlin, you need to understand. And then we see 
the fucking gravestone for Nathan Charles Beaumont, oh, friend. I didn't even see that. Jesus Christ. That's all it said. Nathan <laughs> Charles Beaumont, friend. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of gravestone business in here. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, and I, as I put, here's my note. Headstone can eat my ass. <laughs> That scene is so bad. It's so bad. It's one of the many worst scenes in this movie. You can just hear the people around the world walking away from the film at that moment right yeah. there. Yeah. Just, it, okay, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and this is one of the scenes where the production value is actually worse than most of the rest of the movie. Like, most of the rest of the movie looks like a Christian-produced movie for, like, TBN or whatever. Yes. And this one is, like... um uh like web series level like like t- 2005 web series level like uh like think of if you've ever seen the web series malice it looks like that but it's not good in any way oh yeah jesus christ oh, it's so bad um and then that scene's over and then now they're at the science room yeah he ryan's in the lab talking a bunch of bullshit with his two douchebag lab assistants who never leave yeah they never leave they're always <laughs> even even later when nate shows up they're like um it's pretty late why are you here it's, why the fuck are you here <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> no kidding and oh <sighs> guess who shows up oh, oh god is it nate no no it's caitlin oh that's right <laughs> because you don't remember you don't expect her because she's all no you can't you can't it's too dangerous I got, i've got to do it caitlin no I but she did. but what if somebody gets hurt <laughs> <laughs> no but it's it's too important <laughs> and then she shows up oh. what did you think I was going to let you do it all by yourself? <laughs> oh, God. And then and then comes possibly the, the second worst film in the entire scene. Film. Which is second worst film. <laughs> the second worst scene in the entire film. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the lab montage. Yeah. Oh, with, well. Part- with the terrible Radiohead cover. Yeah. It's not. It's not. And sadly, it's not a Radiohead cover. What do you mean? It's that's a Radiohead song. Yeah, it's just the Radiohead song. Are you sure that's not a cover? I mean, they're even like cited in the uh, in the fucking soundtrack. Wow, the movie's so bad it made me li- dislike that song. That I actually, <laughs> like it's so far out of context of just listening to that song that it made it worse. I I was trying to listen and I and figure out if it was actually Tom York's voice. And I finally just was like, there's no fucking way it sounds. This is just too weird. It sucks too much. Yeah. It's hard to picture Tom York's voice, uh, Tom York's face while listening to his voice and seeing this guy's face, especially because this guy kind of looks like the vocalist from Muse, but worse, <laughs> so much worse. <laughs> wow. I can't believe that they, they, uh, who are they the ones who would approve that? Cause man, that was a bad move. Man, I don't know. It's possible that it could be like a studio thing. It could be that they were like, no, it's this cool movie and Richard Dawkins will vouch for it. He's the voice of the computer. They're like, okay, Richard Dawkins computer. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) As soon as that song, as soon as that song lit up that, I was like, oh fuck, here we go. Here we go with a fucking montage. And then there's the C. Oh, I love when he's at the chalkboard. Oh, yeah. The big fake math chalkboard. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's it's completely overboard with the like math formulas covering every inch of it. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like even like touching parts of it and like hovering over parts with his hand. He's like this area here. This is why it should be working. Oh, God. Um, I'm like, dude, what were you? Did you get on a ladder? Because some of that shit's like 15 feet in the air. Yeah. <laughs> And I also like that it's not even a whiteboard. Like, this is a brand new state-of-the-art facility we find out much later in the movie. And they're like, no, we don't want a whiteboard. We want a chalkboard. (laughs) But I do want to say that before the montage, the science Hmm. montage, um, because this movie is completely composed of cliche dialogue, whenever she walks in, 
<laughs> she says, what are you standing around for? Let's make it happen. <laughs> oh, God, that's what it was. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, and uh, so they, they do a montage, <laughs> and someone says there's only one thing left to do, and it turns out that the one thing left to do is murder this fucking mouse. <laughs> fucking mouse yeah oh god yeah and uh yeah. <laughs> they put it they put it in the 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 lab thing the microwave or whatever the hell they call that thing yeah. <laughs> and uh oh and the computer is of course richard dawkins it's saying like hmm um uh, cellular decay blah oh, oh it initiated hmm mm. yes Mm. Uh, it's, this computer is incredibly pompous. Mm. No, I'm much more important than Hitchens. <laughs> God. And during all this, they also uh, look at a photograph of themselves that, where Nate, who we have not yet met, is there. And also some other guy that we have not yet met. Uh, <laughs> that it will later be revealed as Bill. Yeah. Good old Bill. <sighs> yeah. And uh, as soon as as soon as the Radiohead music is over, it's back to the crazy orchestra, mm -hmm. um, and something that they do works, and they're very excited, and they celebrate success with champagne. Uh, they spend a whole long time pouring champagne, toasting to things, and then at the very last second, they take the glass of champagne away from the the youthiest of the lab assistants because he's not old enough. And they are complete assholes. Yeah, that's so stupid. Yeah. Just because it's a cliche thing to do. Oh, not the young guy. He can't drink. <laughs> wah, wah. Oh, and then Ryan Ryan sees some sort of like creepy looking face dude. Yeah. Like yeah. off in the distance. So he has to go follow him. Yeah. There's a, a guy that's in the stadium seating. <laughs> that's in their lab yeah. and he's wearing a hoodie and his face is you know uh like uh uh fast motion blurry back and forth yeah and so blah, 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 blah. yeah <laughs> in in the least creepy way possible yeah actually <laughs> uh and uh so he follows him around hallways where you can see him he keeps getting all quickity twitchy and uh, then he follows him down what is a dark alleyway in normal hallways, and um, in yeah, the, the shadows, darkest darkest yeah. building in the history of buildings. Yeah, it has the worst lighting. This brand new state of the art temporal sciences building that has, we'll later later find out, a big Bertha in it. <laughs> um, and it, there's just this one dark hallway in there, and in that hallway hallway is some sort of creepy spider shape. Which is just suddenly gone. That's yeah. that's the end. Where we just cut away. Like nothing happens. It just you just he sees this and then it's then that part's done. Yep. And we're done. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the press is there. They're very excited about this college experiment. There mm -hmm. are there are like dozens of people with cameras and microphones in his face and the I guess not 21 year old lab assistant guy uh, has to protect him from the press with co no comment and like try to get him through the crowd. And, and Ryan starts having like a PTSD moment where everything gets all slow and low pitched. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, and then we have a, one of our, you know, flashback moments and all of a sudden he's at a different press event, but this one's still in the science building, but now there's some shitty guy there with him and Caitlin and his name is Nate. Uh, yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna test the they're gonna fucking like do a test in front of an audience, which makes no sense. Yep, yep. And um, so the three of them are up there while like the press are taking pictures. It's a much calmer, cooler event. And uh, Ryan is standing in the middle with Kate to one side and Nate to the other. And Kate leans over to him and she says, "Are we having fun yet?" And then Nate leans in. To him and says, I could get used to this. Oh, God. <laughs> I could get used to this. <laughs> so, bad. It's just so bad. Oh, my God. So uncomfortable and awkward. There's oh. no chemistry between them. They're, no. It's just horrible. Yeah. 
I did find out that the actor that played Ryan and the actor that played Caitlin were in a movie together, uh, a Will Ferrell movie called Everything Must Go or something like that. They were in that movie? They were both in that movie. Wow. Yeah. I know she actually has had some credits. I, I, of that bunch, she's probably the, the best actor, not including the Bill guy, but uh, but that's not saying much. Yeah. <laughs> because she's terrible. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So they're going to send an hour ga- hourglass back in, sp- in time. Like, yeah. They're going to send an hourglass through time. They never really say if it's backward or forward. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going to send it into the the tentacled, smoky anus portal. Oh, yeah. The portal looks real dumb. <laughs> so it's like, I'm, I wouldn't put anything in that thing. That looks fucking horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't it doesn't look great. It doesn't look real. But it would, if it was real, that would definitely not be something that you'd want to play with. <laughs> It's like, you can send the mouse in there, that's fine. Do not bring that back. Is this the point at which they establish that you can't put metal through the fucking thing? Yeah, um, because, um, okay, so at some point, there's this, there's the, the like, dean or whatever who's on a microphone doing, like, announcer guy business. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they establish that it can't be anything, I guess, metal that goes through. Mm-hmm. And that's why, like, the it has to be, like, glass or plastic. And I guess that hourglass doesn't have any metal fixings to holding it together. No, and, and I guess the lid to the jar that had marbles in it that we see later go through the thing mm-hmm. wasn't made out of metal, even though it was made out of metal. Yep, absolutely. Fucking idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think maybe somebody might have noticed that. Oh my god, yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's so bad. So the announcer guy is like saying a bunch of dumb stuff, and then uh, shitty, shitty press question glasses man named Larry. <laughs> Larry is so terrible. <laughs> he's really bad. Thankfully, he's not in this movie very long. Yeah. Um, uh, he leans over to the guy that's talking into a microphone and is like, yes, but is bad things <laughs> and he's like well theoretically if bad things uh, it would blow up uh, and uh the room that you see this fancy room that we have this portal in is uh fancily made and it could withstand the equivalent of an atomic bomb to which larry says quote atomic bomb good analogy <laughs> i know it's like it's not a good analogy you fucking idiot with your fucking little Mr. Peabody glasses. That's not a good analogy. Oh. You're a moron. <laughs> good analogy. It's just the movie congratulating itself. <laughs> it's it's a terrible analogy. It's it's a pretty much it's like a one for one ratio analogy. It's it's such a good room. It could withstand an explosion. Like, hmm, I don't know. What kind of explosions do people gauge things by? <laughs> Bombs, maybe? Yeah. Fucking idiot. <sighs> but he writes for National Science Magazine or some stupid yeah. magazine. Hi, this is Larry with National Science Magazine. <laughs> and then they, hey, 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 rats, come with me, Larry. I'll give you a tour. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was another one because he wanted to, like, ask Ryan questions. And you can't ask Ryan questions because of his emotional... <laughs> <laughs> vulnerability so yeah they do have to understand he was emo when he was a kid and yeah. he just can't hang yeah he can't he's never been able to hang <laughs> um, and so nate like swoops in and what can only be described as a uh, body odors him away um <laughs> to show him cool things uh so um So Nate, like, shows him things, including Big Bertha, the way that they power the thing. And in reference to Big Bertha, he says, quote, the boys at NASA can't wait to get their hands on this one. (laughs) (laughs) He also he also says quite possibly. I don't know. I mean, it's so hard to measure. He says a really terrible line. 
were safe as bugs in rugs. Yeah, yeah, that's because that's because Larry is worried about the risk of ripping a hole in space time and Heisenberg principles. Oh, and God. so he's like, "Hey, we we're safe as bugs in rugs." That's pretty much how he talks. Yeah, while fixing himself another drink, he is so drunk all the time. The guy's a complete booze hound. Yeah. At the end, he uh, at the end of his amazing body odor tour, he shows Larry <laughs> the jar of marbles. He's like, "Yeah, this is the first object that ever traveled through time. It is a jar full of marbles." Um, and as they walk away, we see one of the marble shifts, supposedly because one of them disappeared. So stupid. Yeah. So just remember that this jar of marbles, first object through time. Yeah, with a little sign on it that says, first object through time, Larry decides to take a picture of it from the back. <laughs> Didn't want to get that in there. You, <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> oh my God, this movie. <laughs> I saw that camera and I was like, here we go. Yeah. Here goes dumb fucking Larry. He's going to have to figure out the photo caption later. Oh, I don't know. Some marbles. <laughs> marbles with a back of a sign. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, what's his nuts? Nate says, uh, <laughs> he says, anytime people say that I've lost my marbles, I just show them this. Oh, God. <laughs> really? Anytime, huh? Uh, uh, and then we switch back to Kate, or no, I'm sorry, to Ryan, who's being moody. He sees some sort of like janitor, and he doesn't like seeing that janitor, so he watches him for a very long time <laughs> until finally Caitlin shows up and they have a dumb conversation. Yet another dumb conversation that doesn't mean anything and is pointless. It just goes absolutely nowhere. Yeah. Totally irrelevant. Could have been cut. Wouldn't have mattered at all. Yeah, except then Nate comes in in third wheels and he says, there they are, my two favorite people in time and space. God, the king of the cock block. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I think Larry comes back and he asks how long it'll be before they spent, they send a person through the portal. And Nate, of course, has to say, we could tell you, but we'd have to kill you. Yeah. We'd have to kill you, Larry. <laughs> Am I right, guys? <laughs> oh, he is the worst uncle of a person. Oh. And then what does he say? Well, let me let me let you in on one more secret, Larry. <laughs> I don't. And then he opens his mouth like like he he apparently he's like a snake because he can unhinge his jaw yeah. and opens his mouth unnaturally wide and then goes. You see, <laughs> there's no metal in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he has no metal fillings. He just just a severe case of gingivitis. <laughs> severe case of gingivitis and my balls. Yeah, it's so so unpleasant. <laughs> oh my god, the worst guy. Ugh, when he opened, I remember, like, I'm like, dude, what are you? Oh, stop! Don't do that. That's not necessary. Yeah, that's that's unpleasant. Oh my god. He also says, hold on to your hair plugs, Larry, because you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> I hate him so much. <laughs> He's a terrible human being. He is the worst. I hope that he gets melted into a puddle of fluid and then shot. But they love him forever because he brained some guy with a piece <laughs> of lumber. He, he viciously murdered a child with wood. <laughs> And then unviciously murdered a completely different child. Oh Nate God. is absolutely a serial killer. He is a child killer. Yeah. Murder oh. of children, Nate. Weird, gross step uncle of time travel. Sweaty, salivary, stranding Nate. So that scene's over. We never have to see Larry again. We're back in Ryan's uh, piano kitchen. That's when there's the knock on the door and uh, it, there's a, a box, uh, a little paper, like brown paper box tied with twine, like a gift. And he opens it and there's nothing in it. Of course. Yeah. And don't worry uh, if that seems like an unimportant thing that will happen lots of times in this movie, because yes, 
Yeah, it will happen many times, and and it will continue to be unimportant each time. Yeah, until the one time that uh, there's something in the box and it sucks. Oh, and then the oh, there's a, there's something related to the box later that made me want to slit my throat. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're back at Miskatonic University. They're trying to walk to their building, but there is a Christian protest, and Christians are holding up signs like a sign that says no science and another sign that says god creates time <laughs> oh god uh, <laughs> this is this is another contender for the worst scene in this movie um there is a uh like meat-headed pastor man saying christian things while holding a bible one of the things that he says is that science has finally gone too far <laughs> Which I thought was great. Like, finally, science has gone too far. <laughs> I, the moment I've been waiting for. At long last. Uh, uh. And we find out that the Bible guy was their elementary school bully named Abner, which this isn't a old movie. Like, the, it's not set in olden times when people would be named Abner. Yeah. So he was just some shitty kid that came out shitty, and his parents were like, wow, this kid is shitty. Let's name him Abner. <laughs> and of course he's – and, you know, I, I'm i not exactly a Christian apologist, but um, just because he's a Christian in this movie, he has to be at, like the worst person that has ever lived. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, give me a fucking break. It's so – everything is so cartoonish and – stereotyped and just uh oh. yeah yeah so uh nate like, like they're just sitting there watching and uh nate has to say something like holy shit literally <laughs> god and uh the the dude's saying stuff about repentance and uh nate says oh i've got some repentance for you right here because that's the kind of guy he is yeah Oh my god. Just can't let it go. No. And so he has to get up on the steps with the protest guy and proceed to have the worst atheism versus religion debate. It is the most cringiest, unforgivable thing I've ever seen. Oh, I mean, boy, wouldn't an apologetics book go a long way for these two. Yeah. He he says, let me see if I've got this right. And he starts like listing preposterous things like jesus rode a dinosaur uh the earth is flat am i understanding this correctly yeah well, it's only 400 years old uh, stop me when i'm wrong <laughs> right guys <laughs> oh, it's so bad and this director this gus halwerda directed a movie where he followed richard dawkins and lawrence krauss around the the debate circuit to listen to debates about religion versus atheism and this is the scene that he came up with. <laughs> this is what he has distilled from reasonably intelligent men debating religion. Yeah. It's so bad. Oh, God. And all of the, the extras that they hired as protesters looked like bored people that didn't understand why they had to be doing this. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're supposed to be these impassioned, you know, Christian, like, like Christian fundamentalist people. And we all know the type. And, you know, like Westboro type weirdness or something. And they're just, they look so bored and yeah. let's wave. Oh, don't forget to wave your sign. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, oh, yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's real bad. There's uh, no heft to it. It feels like there's three of them and nobody, you know, they have no, there's no threat of, of them being there. They're just annoying. You know, it's the worst protest of all time, but it's supposed to be like this horrible thing that, that Nate just, he just can't let it go it's like dude there's like three people on the fucking stairs who gives a shit yeah yeah exactly and it turns out that they don't even need to go through that door so so caitlin and ryan like pull him away they're like hey stop <laughs> and and he's like s- like still mad over his shoulder saying things like i i usually have a, a one ass kicking per customer rule but i'm thinking about oh. breaking it for you guy which yeah. that comes into play later when uh nate essentially causes permanent brain damage to this person that will later become the unabomber <laughs> also as an adult nate isn't kicking anybody's ass no 
yeah, I mean, he, I guess he's certainly capable of murder, as we will learn. But yeah. <laughs> oh, and that, this line, don't forget this line that Abner sh- shouts at them. <laughs> Do not give in to the shadow demons of yeah. science. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> it's like, whoa, what the hell? <laughs> okay, guy. <laughs> this this crazy Christian guy's like building his own mythology. Like, yeah, demons are in the Bible, but what about shadow demons? <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's over. Then they go back to the lab. Uh, they're trying to figure out how to make the the portal machine work. And it's not working um, because this is earlier in time than when they got it to work and Nate wasn't there. Um, And so one of the things they do is uh, they send the fucking, they send a mouse in and it turns out like he grabbed a mouse at random and it turned out that it was the, the young, not allowed to have champagne interns uh, favorite mouse yeah. They send it through, it comes back and it dissolves into a puddle and he is sad and it doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Cut cut to ketchupiest burger of all time. <laughs> Dude, who the fuck puts that much ketchup on a burger? It's just like soaked. <laughs> Uh, and and the answer, of course, is fucking Nate. Fucking Nate, yeah. And it's because it's it's supposed to be like in this scene, the bloody puddle that used to be a mouse, and now in this scene, a burger with too much ketchup. Such a fucking terrible. Like Just, that. Do you know that dude went home that like Gus, whatever, went home that night and jerked off to that thought. Like, <laughs> oh my god, it was such a great idea. What a, what a great scene transition. Oh, I'm such an artist. Oh. Oh, someone alert the academy! <laughs> oh my god, the Golden Globes will love me. Oh god, um, can't can't stop rubbing my own Golden Globes right now. <laughs> it's it's so bad. It's just the worst, and it, it looks like it. It's not even just so much ketchup. It's like he specifically tried to get the ketchup where the pulp and water had separated, and just get the ketchup water on there. Yeah, just to make it wet red. <laughs> so fun. Uh. Uh, and so they're drinking, um, except for Caitlin, who's drinking water. They're drinking Bud Lights. And uh, there's this whole conversation. And he, uh, Nate, of course, says, you know, they call them lab rats for a reason. To which Ryan says, nice. Like, that's such a dumb thing to say. Like, yeah, it is dumb because it makes no sense. <laughs> He's just like such a little... Oh my oh. god! Oh, and I, I like that. There's like a vase on the table with dead flowers in it. Yeah. What? <laughs> like, yeah, you guys couldn't spring for live flowers for this show. Yeah, yeah, it's it's real sad. Everything's real sad. So they're drinking beer, talking about stuff. Uh, <laughs> Nate pulls out a partially, uh, like half full bottle of Jim Beam. At mm-hmm. at a bar where they're already drinking, and so he's just like double fisting between Bud Light and Jim Beam, and they're like trying to get him to stop drinking. <laughs> Calm the fuck down, Nate. Yeah. Then they talk about uh, how they're talking about Bill, like this one's for Bill, and Bill figured out the mystery of what lies beyond. I guess we all figured that one out sooner or later. <laughs> And this is the first instance in this movie of th- this pretty atheist themed movie about like the afterlife. Like they keep bringing it up. Yeah. It's real weird. It really, it really is. It's like, um, <laughs> are you having a little, little trouble with your thoughts there, buddy? Yeah. What part of science are, do you know about? Gus, are you having a hard time? Do you, do you need to talk? Do you need a cuddle? Yeah. And so Caitlin is going to leave because she's sick of Nate's gross assholery. Yeah. And then he figures it out. He's like, oh, no, no, no. I'll leave you two. <laughs> so he just, he pieces out. And then they immediately start, like, petting each other and talking gross and what, yeah. They said that they haven't been left alone together for 16 years or some shit like that. Yeah, because fucking Nate won't leave him alone. Yeah, that's true. 
And we find out later that they do like it. Even as kids, they preferred it when he wasn't there. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? <laughs> uh, so Nate leaves. He's entirely drunk. He gets in a taxi and he says, Miskatonic University and don't spare the whip. Oh, God. Everything out of his mouth is ins- is just offensive and stupid. Yeah, he is insufferable, I think is the word you were looking for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a boring conversation that does not matter again. Uh, <laughs> while Nate shows up at the lab uh, where the two interns just are. There they are. This is the scene we talked about earlier where they're just there. And they're like, uh, it's pretty late. Why are you here? And he has the bottle of Jim Beam. He is taking swigs of it actively and activating the time portal and they're just like watching him confused not doing anything while he activates the time portal gets into the room locks the door behind him and gets naked gets naked and somehow locks them out where they can't even stop anything he's doing yeah yeah that's where this is where i put I've seen Nate's ass crack. All hope is lost. Yes. Yes. He has the world's uh, tuftiest nipples. Oh, <laughs> he's disgusting. <laughs> he, he looks like, I, I don't know what his, he just, he's horrible. He's not attractive at all. <laughs> and that's why at no point in this movie does he ever have a date with anyone. Not even close. Not even the slightest hint. Yeah. He literally says, hook me up with one of Kate's girlfriends. I'm dying over here later on. <laughs> um, and so he, they, he uh, they do nothing to prevent the obviously drunk guy from doing all of this and going into the machine that has been proven to melt living flesh. Yeah. And so they call, uh, they call Ryan and they say, quote, we have a situation. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you do. So Ryan and Kate rush over there. Ryan then attempts to break through the glass on the room that we have already been told could survive a <laughs> nuclear <laughs> blast, which is a great analogy, by the way. He tries to break through that with a plastic chair that just <laughs> bounces off without making a sound. <laughs> Oh, did, did that not work, <laughs> Professor Dickhead? Yeah, so he tries it twice. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mr. Child Prodigy. Yeah, just like all the way over the head, like chopping wood, like, yeah! It's just dumb. <laughs> and Nate's like, oh, I figured it out. I redid the math. And Caitlin is trying to do the smart thing and actually talk him out of doing this dumb nonsense. Yeah. But he is too drunk to listen to reason, so he goes into the fucking portal. Yeah, his naked ass hops right in. Yeah. Yeah, even though I don't think his clothes are made of metal, he, I think he just decided to <laughs> it. it's, it's time to get naked for no reason. <laughs> These boxer shorts might have surprise metal in them. <laughs> He he jumps in and he gets juiced. Yeah. In one of the better shots in this movie, we we see just a a puddle of of human juice slowly pouring out of the portal. Yeah, once you get past the the CGI bit where the like little blobs of it are coming through the portal, Mm -hmm. which looks very CGI, but then when they just show the like corn syrup with the food coloring just gushing over the side of the thing that was pretty awesome yeah until it stops and you see that they have poured maybe an arm's worth of human body tissue out (laughs) (laughs) so the puddle is not very big and it's supposed to be an entire him that came out yeah that was that was ridiculous i'll give okay i'll give one plus to the movie the the portal actually looks like something that somebody would build for a lab like it it looks they actually welded this thing together it looked like they you know yeah yeah you could even see the the little like welding stripes where the where it was screwed down and everything yeah it looked good it actually looked pretty pretty like okay that's passable yeah and the mini one does too later the one like the prototype 
Oh, and there's lots of jargony science talk. Gus really wants the people that think about time travel to be like, oh, yeah, finally a movie that gets time travel right. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Except they didn't. I'm sure they did. But who yeah, cares? I, they I didn't got get one. anything right. Uh, I, the, I, yeah, it, it, no, I'll, I'll bring it up later, I guess, but it make there's a kick ass time travel movie that that gets it totally right, and it's and it's incredibly entertaining. Yeah, and probably cost way less than this movie, and looks way better. I probably cost next to nothing. It's all just shot on one, basically one location, and there's no effects in it at all, if but, I remember correctly. Yeah, but you have to rent that storage unit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we saw nate get liquefied oh yeah and and so they're sad and then the cops show up and the cop confirms yep that puddle is him all right yeah which just sent a sample back to the lab just came back in it's uh it's definitely his gna pro dna profile like you sent it back to the lab and already had it tested yeah but you're still on site that's fine whatever oh, it, it's but... it's fine the police are incompetent in this movie yeah yeah. Oh, but uh, but uh, one thing. Uh, for some reason, the uh, the material that we tested was of a a seventy five year old man. Yeah, it had the cellular. This puddle of human biomass has the cellular decay of seventy five years. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, and so he has any idea how that could be. <laughs> Like he's nailed him or something. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you mean this puddle of human biomatter that just came through the world's most egregious microwave oven? <laughs> but but I'm clearly up to something. Yeah. Any idea? <laughs> Here. Um, my friend got, got juiced in a time machine? Yeah. Here at the Temporal Science Building of Miskatonic University? Do you have any idea, buddy? Oh, God. <laughs> Worst cops. Yeah, really bad cops. So uh, he, Ryan is holding the jar of marbles and thinking, thinking all confused and sad like he sees the uh, shadowy spider like thing in the shadows again. And then it gets all woozy, which indicates another time jump for mm -hmm. memory or whatever it doesn't really explain what's going on with the storytelling time jumps it's just no yeah it's just that's happening and then, and then oh good nate's back <laughs> yeah nate's back and because this is in the past everyone is presented as younger and so in order to present nate as a younger person he's now wearing the uh corduroy blazer of a youth Ugh. And he has a baseball cap on backwards. <laughs> of course he does. For Ryan to look younger, they did nothing. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. He's and, now younger. Yeah. And I think for Caitlin, they like put her hair in a braid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> so the only thing they did to make them look younger is to make Nate look like a different kind of douchebag. <laughs> uh, there's so much more. Yeah. Uh, it, it, enter James Morrison, the one qualified actor on the set. Mm -hmm. um, he is their teacher and they are trying to do their first ever time travel experiment. Mm -hmm. wherein they send a jar of marbles through a tiny version of the portal. Mm -hmm. It works. They go through with the metal lid right on there. Right on it. Not a problem. Uh, and James Morrison instantly dies of a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> like, just... I've invented time travel. It's time to die. <laughs> it's so fucked up. It's like, wait, no, don't go. You're the only, the only glimmer of hope he in this whole movie. Saw some reason to keep watching. He's dead, just like Darth Maul. Yeah, uh, and so he's having a heart attack to death, and then Ryan immediately drops the jar of marbles on the floor. The jar shatters. So that jar later on 
isn't actually the jar of marbles that went through the time travel machine. It's just a different jar, and it maybe has the same marbles in it. Yeah. The stupid marble <laughs> idea that never made sense anyway now makes less sense. <laughs> hey, you, they didn't lose their marbles. <laughs> fucking movie <laughs> so now now the fact like part of the thing is that like oh, when they sent the jar of marbles through the jar is full like it's an entire jar of marbles and right you know the marbles are disappearing so like during early, later earlier in the movie later in time shots there's so few marbles in there but in this one like it like smashes open maybe they didn't even pick up all the marbles they could have picked up half we have no sense that like there's it's counting down to something it makes no sense it has yeah. nothing to do with anything it's yeah so frustrating yeah it, it it's so ugh. Yeah, yeah. I put Bill Croak's "Lucky Bill," and then <laughs> Ryan looks like Mister Spock if he was a drag queen. <laughs> oh, much less interesting than that. Sadly. I know. Um, and, oh, and then it cuts to. And I'll just say this: this is what I wrote for what it cuts to. Why is he stroking his sleeping mother? <laughs> I, I did have one thing in between there because they, there is a scene of them just waiting in the hallway. And it's when the doctor says, uh, shows up and he's like, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. He's totes dead balls. Yeah. I think Cause you have to have that scene. In yeah. There. But yeah, then, then after that, he, he what appears to be him breaking into someone's house, sneaking into their room and stroking this woman's hair. She's what she wakes up oh, and it's his mom. That was so weird. And, and then he's he's stroking her hair, and she's like, "What's the matter?" And he's like, "Nothing. Go back to sleep." And he keeps <laughs> stroking her. <laughs> Not what, creepy at all. What the fuck, my horrible son? Have you been hanging out with your serial killer best friend or something? <laughs> Go back to sleep, my mother. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, then uh, he looks at a picture of his family and he gets all frowny face. It's a picture of him and his mom and his dad, who we don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's like looking at other pictures in the attic and there's a picture of an empty bench that makes his frowny face happen. Mm -hmm. And then we see a birth certificate with none of the fields filled out. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the attic, in the like dusty corner is the outline of the creepy spider thing again. That's right. Super scary. Oh, so scary. <laughs> and then uh, we're back at the world's fakest uh, uh, graveyard. Oh, uh, the worst world for the world's worst funeral. <laughs> yes. Because guess who's given the fucking eulogy? <laughs> fucking chatterbox. He says something about how Bill unlocked the wonders of the universe around us. <laughs> God. <laughs> and then we find out that Nate. He says, quote, I never knew my real father, but I like to think that Bill knew that I wished it could have been him. Oh, God. What? Oh. He didn't just want to say that I wished it could have been Bill, but he thinks that he thinks that Bill knew that he wished. That. Oh. It's such a bad line. It's so terrible. Oh. And then uh, after the funeral, they go and visit Ryan's dad's grave, who is in the same graveyard. Mm -hmm. um, his mom is there and she tells him that wherever his dad is, I'm sure he's proud of you, which is another thing like what? Wherever? <sighs> OK, OK, yeah. this movie. Um, and then from behind a tree, we see what movie viewer we know is time traveling Nate. Mm -hmm. He comes up and he tries to uh, to talk. He tells Ryan that he's got to talk to him. And Ryan's like, no, I have to go talk to anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> and so he uses his mom as a decoy. And his mom is like, oh, Nate, remember the time that you were a little piece of shit? And time travel, time travel, Nate sucks so bad at talking to Ryan <laughs> that he just walks away with Ryan's with mom, mom. <laughs> and listens to her talk. He's got he's got plenty of time <laughs> to fuck around. So he goes and he talks to the stupid fucking college dean guy or whatever that tells him more proud of you things about Bill. Bill would be so your family. And he was so 
white. He was just so gross, old, white, wealthy, you know. <laughs> he had old white man money. He, just, he had the kind of money that you only get when you're old, white, and male. <laughs> so, <laughs> apparently, they're going to use the money that Bill, uh, the old money that Bill had. He even says mm-hmm. old money money. Yeah. Um, they're going to build the temporal science building that has been in the movie up to this point, but now isn't because time travel. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there's a whole boring conversation in there. Caitlin's part of it and Ryan's part of it. Nate is not. Yeah. None of it should be there. It's completely useless. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like now we know that that's how that building got built, but it doesn't matter. It completely doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. Yeah, it's just that Gus was like, but ha- who would build such a thing? <laughs> I mean, it would have to come from old money. <laughs> Fucking idiot. And so then there's another flashback, and they are kids now. Yep, uh, with so much emo hair. Yeah, emo hair, and uh, they're in a uh, what looks like a high school science room and bill is their teacher even though they are mere children yeah he hasn't aged you know or, or he's no younger yeah he looks exactly the same because of course he is yeah and they all have like brushed forward emo hair from five years ago yeah oh and they are they are all of the actors have now been replaced with children with children yeah great yeah. children super children <laughs> No, one of which maybe kind of like the 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 girl one kind of looks like Caitlyn a little bit. Yeah. But but not really. But the other two, not even close. Yeah. No. They just look like a couple of crab core guys. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sick crab core reference, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, and so there's a scene where we go into Bill's amazing office that's at this shitty looking high school. Yeah. And uh, Ryan gives him a pile of books. He says he's finished all of them and he needs another book. And Bill gives him what I was super hoping was going to be the Necronomicon. Yeah. I was like, oh, you know what? Actually, there's one book that I think will be just perfect for you. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells? <laughs> yeah. This one is really going to blow your mind. Yeah. <laughs> he made it sound like it's the craziest thing ever. I don't I don't often pull this one off the shelf because it <laughs> contains great wisdom. Yeah. Like, dude, what the fuck are you talking you about? You can, like, they... <laughs> I guess I guess not everyone worked at Barnes and Noble for forever, but like <laughs> there's a billion different cheap, shitty paperback editions of that. And we find you get out, it for free online. Yeah, exactly. We we just we find out later in the movie, but earlier in time, before this scene takes place in time, but later in the movie, that the kid's reading Flatland. So like, what the fuck is this? H.G. Wells's Time Machine is <laughs> such bullshit. There, I've been waiting. I've been holding on to this the crazy, the furry caterpillar book for you. It's like it's like some obscure sacred tome that, <laughs> you know, this one really meant a lot to me. I think you're going to f- really uncover the secrets of the universe in here. This is the one. Yeah. It's called Mark Twain. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Oh, it would have been so much cooler if it was the Necronomicon. Oh, yeah, I mean that's just a softball, and you just you just knock that one right out of the park. But no, not no. Gus. No, and <laughs> we find out later why this school is the way it is. But because this movie is back, is like reverse time or whatever. It's like, yeah, what the fuck is this? So Bill, <laughs> even then, Bill has been these kids' teacher for 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 fucking ever. Yeah, yeah, for like. 10, 13 years of their life, he was their teacher. He followed them to teach them wherever they were. Imagine having to be around those three twats for so long. I will say that Kid Nate is infinitely less annoying than the grown-up Nate. Yeah, Kid Nate's actually okay. Yeah, he's still pretty annoying, but not not nearly as annoying like he really should have you know only the good die young nay should have died as a kid. 
<laughs> the, the, the kid Nate, the kid Nate seems like he's probably an okay kid who just, you know, is doing the best he can with shitty material. Yeah, doesn't know how to not murder people. <laughs> yeah, the other the other actor is would be just terrible in everything, period. Full stop. <laughs> So they're the three of them kids. They they do science stuff together. They they go for a little walk, walking home from school. Um, Caitlin has to go back for something, and she tells them to wait there. There, uh, Nate's real whiny about having to wait there. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, she makes it back to her locker where there is the little brown paper package wrapped in twine that was empty earlier. And then a the bully shows up, Abner. We see that he's in detention. He sees her walk by, and then apparently he just leaves detention. Yeah. Um, and uh, has a whole scene where he says creepy things to her and then starts beating the shit out of, uh, out of Ryan, who showed up, and <laughs> flimsied his way around to defend Caitlin. Uh, and then the teacher shows up and he's like, hey, what happened here? She was like, ah, Abner's a piece of shit. And he's like, Abner, get back into detention. Come on. <laughs> I know. <sighs> there you are. Like, oh, give me a break. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Competent adults. So Ryan opens the box. It turns out it was a gift for Ryan because it's his birthday and he didn't want to tell anyone. And that doesn't mean anything in this movie. Yeah, he, um, he opens the box with his filthy fingers that has dirt under his nails. The worst kid. God, little fucker. It turns out that the the gift in the stupid box is his is that spherical locket that we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And it is her birthday gift to him. And inside the locket is a really badass marble. Yeah, pretty impressive marble. Yeah, it's a marble that uh, glows with internal light that swirls like uh, some yeah. kind of universe. Yeah, it's a glowy, swirly marble. Yeah, it's like uh, from the first Men in Black movie. Oh, shit. Yeah. No explanation. And he's nope. not like, this is ridiculous. What the fuck is this? He's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, man. Uh, that's all right, I guess. Well, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. You want to go listen to AFI? <laughs> Uh, this makes me feel silver and cold. <laughs> Do you like Fallout Boy? <laughs> and then Nate shows up at the door and he says, quote, What the hell is this? The love boat? I've been waiting <laughs> down at the corner like a schmuck. <laughs> Somebody wrote that line. <laughs> and that kid delivered it perfectly. <laughs> like a piece of shit. <laughs> Is this the love book? <laughs> oh my god. It's really hard to tell what era those children are from. <laughs> yeah, because emo kids probably didn't even know what the love boat was. Yeah. It, you can tell that they were like going for like some sandlot type feeling yeah. to it, but no. <laughs> but just way missed the mark. Yeah, what if the sandlot but barely avoided a school shooting? <laughs> <sighs> oh god um then then we move and it's uh it's ryan and he's in bed and he sees the creepy spider at the foot of this of his bed and i put a note right here i don't remember why but right here is where i put the note this orchestra music is really something else <laughs> i put his kid stash is pure hell <laughs> That horrible little like if I don't if I don't shave it it'll be a mustache one day thing a little like, fuzzy little molestache oh just like five black strings hanging out <laughs> it's gross just can you just pluck that shit before put rolling film or whatever <laughs> they have a walk to school and <laughs> they say it's kind of quiet without Nate and the other one says it's kind of nice though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a running joke almost yeah. <laughs> uh they uh they walk by this uh this alleyway and in the alleyway it's like the alleyway where uh hank hill and his friends would drink beer yeah and uh and in this alleyway is a bunch of garbage cans and giant um starcraft like pods 
uh, yeah, just just pulsating and of various sizes and structure and weird fluidy pod business. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's a decent effect. Yeah, and and part of what made this scene one of the more effective ones is uh, they both obviously see them. Mm-hmm. and they don't say anything they don't they don't they don't verbally recognize that they're there they just agree to not go down that alleyway today yeah that was that was weird like i had kind of noted like did she did she see it but she had to have mm-hmm. and then they decide to race yeah yeah then they decide to be kids and run um they and it's it's the type of place where there hasn't been rain there's just dust and rocks yeah and and uh concrete and uh, so they're running, and uh, they go around a corner, and Abner clotheslines Ryan just right across the neck. Straight up clotheslines yeah. it. Like, like his feet come out and everything. Yeah, total badass. It was absolutely savage. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. You just crushed his windpipe. I mean, that was... Yep, that was brutal. Yep, and now he has a, an entire uh, group of bullies with him. Um and he's got he had, one of them's holding Caitlin, and this is where he uh, licks her face and is saying gross things about you didn't give me your gift and you're gonna give me your gift. And, ugh. <sighs> so disgusting. It's a very unpleasant thing to watch. Uh, and yeah, it's, yeah. I, I mean, they actually had that little actor boy lick that little actor girl's face, which I feel like is not okay. Yeah, that was gross. I, I didn't. That that was like okay, that's gross. Yeah, I didn't like it. I wish it hadn't happened. Yeah, me too. Uh, Twice. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and then um, Abner and Ryan have a fight at which you know Ryan just flimsies himself at Abner, and Abner kicks the living shit out of him. Yeah, just savages him again. Yeah, and then, and then yeah, go ahead. out of nowhere. <laughs> Out of nowhere, yeah. Nate shows up with a gigantic piece of lumber, and he absolutely just bashes Nate's head in. I mean, Nate's head in with it. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, just full on, full swing, clocks him right in the back of the head, yeah. right at the base of the skull. Yeah, and and not even, not even with like the flat of it, like with the edge of this the piece edge of lumber, of it. Like, and like his head is bleeding he flops around on the ground obviously concussed poss- probably permanently brain damaged like this he's not okay yeah i mean he really hit him hard yeah yeah it was brutal yeah and out of nowhere like no no warning just now you're dead so yeah so all the oh yeah that was so weird and then it shows them group hug yeah and yeah. while rocking back and forth <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah, after they chase off the rest of the bullies, they they have a three-way kumbaya group hug. Oh. Uh That was creepy. Yeah. Yeah, it's real not okay the way that Gus does children's stuff in this movie. Ugh. Uh, the music's out of control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this group hug, I'm sure this is one of the scenes where it was like cute little like funny what about Bob style music going on. Oh, God. Then they walk home, and after Caitlin goes in, uh, that's when Nate says, hook me up with one of Caitlin's hot friends. I'm seriously dying over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the note I wrote under that is weird-ass orchestra music. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. That was just too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, goddamn, dial it back a little bit, guys. Yeah. Then we're at Bill's birthday. Yeah, his surprise party. Yeah, and they have a whole thing of uh, he blows out his candles and they're like, tell us what you wished for. And he's like, no, I can't because he's an adult. Of course, that's what you say. God, I can't tell you what I wish for. And then it turns out that his wish was that the three of you stay together forever because you can accomplish anything. <laughs> yeah, except that you can't. <laughs> Except don't stay together with this guy. He's a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's so cheesy. It's such a horrible thing. Oh, and, and Ryan's mom is at this party, too. She's obviously boning Bill. And Ryan is then watching his one of his old birthday videos that his dad is in. And his mom is super into that. 
Ugh. I had to look it up because his mom kind of looks like Rita Rudner, but it's not Rita Rudner. She's just some actress lady. No, that would be terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he's watching this old video of one of his birthdays and his dad's in it. And his mom's like, we can talk about anything you want. And he says, I miss dad. And she's like, y- you miss dad. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, I miss him too. <laughs> sure. I'm sure wherever he is. <laughs> yeah, God. And then there's just like this weird interchange where he, he suddenly gets all insolent and decides that he, he's going to leave. Yeah. Like he's, I gotta go. Yeah. Oh, you don't like my music. <laughs> then she says, what does she say? Let me, let me take you or something. Oh like yeah. That. She likes driving him to school and he wants to walk. That's right. She goes, but I like to drive you. <laughs> it's like, no mom, you make me listen to ABBA. <laughs> it was such an awkward statement the way she said that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's real bad. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. So then he's at school. Uh, he's in a class where they're teaching the Achilles and the tortoise logic problem for some reason. Mm-hmm. You can read into that whatever you like, kind of like uh, the Derrida high school. Yeah. Um, and then he gets a nosebleed. And so after the teacher is done shaming him for not knowing the answer to the Achilles and tortoise logic problem. I know. She's like, get your disgusting face out of here and go to the school nurse. You sick nurse. little piece of fuck. <laughs> you waste of carbon. <laughs> God, you could never beat a tortoise. Um, <laughs> and then that has no purpose. There's no reason no. for that. Um, then he's back home and he's looking at the mail and there's a The Way to Salvation booklet in the mail. There's also an envelope with his name on it on the, on the like, uh, uh, ballet uh, that he never opens and never comes back into the rest of this movie. Yeah. It's weird. Has has no relevance. Yeah. And also there is the twine box, and uh, he opens that. There's nothing in it, and he goes, mm-hmm. Hey, Mom, did you open my... Uh? And then he sees that his mom is with uh, some dude in their living room, and he is apparently Dr. Some Guy from church. Yeah, church guy just shows up, and uh, his mom wants wants him to have a talk with Ryan about not being communicative after dad's accident. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I put a doctor from church, ask some questions, dot, dot, dot. How does this movie still have a half hour left? (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Is there anything, is there anything else that you remember? Yeah. Ryan? I was like, what? Did you touch me in a weird place? (laughs) Are you molest? Yeah, I kept waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, talks about communicate like her before the accident. Uh, shows him the framed picture, the same picture that we looked at earlier. Uh, Ryan says he misses his dad. And he's like, is he the only one in the photo that you miss? Oh, God. Yeah. What a douche. Also, do they do they even define what the accident is? No. Okay. Oh, well, Yes. Okay. But not what happened to his dad. That's what I mean. Yeah. I think his dad has just probably killed himself. <laughs> wow. It's like, Can you blame him? I just met Ryan's friend, Nate. I have to go die. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. This is my kid. This is my wife. This is our pastor. And these are his... Fa- I, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Nope. And peace out. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and then we get a scene of him like spying on his mom talking to the dude and we find out that he doesn't remember something but we don't find out what he doesn't remember right then there's more bullying at school they take his money he is so mad that they bullied him and took his money that he waits until he makes it all the way home and then screams in the vestibule or the foyer of his home and then goes into the valet and he, he open like unlocks it and pulls out the gun that he knows is there. Yeah. 
so he he takes out the gun and he's gonna go to school he's got the gun in his pocket he goes down the he goes towards the same alleyway as before and now instead of the pods there's the creepy spider things playing peekaboo behind garbage cans <laughs> i know it's so weird it's one of the more effective scenes they're really creepy when they're hiding behind the garbage cans where you can't see their torso you can just see their big gross legs yeah they're big like insecty clawed legs yeah uh, but then they peek out all the way and then they just look dumb yeah <laughs> yeah their face is the shape of a foot but it's yeah. just a blank black foot shape yeah, just a featureless foot. Yeah. It's so dumb. <laughs> it's not scary. Yeah. And then Ryan runs away. He almost gets smeared to death by multiple cars, but he manages to make it across the street uh, yeah. where he runs into Bill, uh, who he has apparently never met. So that means that at some point in here, there was another time switch, but they just forgot to indicate that. It might have been at bill's birthday party because the cake glitches is that when it happened i guess yeah. but it doesn't i don't know i'd have to like go, I'm, I'm then i'm not going to go back and check that to see if that's actually yeah so yeah so whenever he started whenever he was watching the video of his own birthday party with his dad that's apparently the first scene of the back in time in this yeah um and so now now he's got the gun in his pocket and he's meeting bill for the first time and bill is uh uh he's like don't worry they can't hurt you is this the first time you've seen them and apparently yes it is uh bill sees that the gun's in his pocket and decides to walk home this murderer um and he calls he calls the thing the creepy spiders lurkers it says that yeah. they're from a different space um and they're just here to watch yeah they're just here to watch that's when ryan pulls out oh like the book flatland <laughs> yeah it's like yeah bill is impressed he says he hasn't he didn't even read that until grad school uh, but later gives him fucking hg wells it's such a piece <laughs> of shit this kid has flatland now and then years later you're going to give him wells's time machine because now he's ready yeah you're ready for this one now <laughs> you're a man yeah, open your mind real wide. So yeah, he says that they just observe us uh, and that uh, those of us that can see them want to understand them. Yeah, it's real clunky. Yeah, and uh, we find out he's a professor at Miskatonic University. He says, I teach a class at the university for extremely bright and troubled kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, yeah, Ryan, you're extremely bright and troubled. Yeah. I... You know, I teach a course at Miskatonic University for extremely bright and troubled children. <laughs> it's like it should have a, a sign on the building that says the school for extremely bright and troubled kids. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's good dialogue. So I guess that's why Nate is there is because he's extremely bright and a serial killer. <laughs> he's definitely troubled. Mm -hmm. I, I will. I will say that's true. And uh Caitlin is apparently bright, and you can tell that she is troubled by everything that is going on around her always. <laughs> she is pretty much just an emotional, like, tinderbox. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> uh, Hi, Caitlin. <laughs> we see Lawrence Krauss. He's talking to people. He's a professor in a hallway. Uh, so there's that. That covers the bases on Richard Dawkins and Lawrence Krauss being in this movie. Ugh. He takes them into a science room where he introduces Ryan to Caitlin and Nate and none of the other kids that are in there. Yeah, yeah. just those two, because, I mean, it just felt right. Yeah, these are the special ones. Later, I'm going to wish for you to be together forever. The brightest and most troubled. Yeah. <laughs> so I would assume it's because the other two can see the lurkers. And so he was like, he was like, oh, here, you go with these. They're the... The, they're bright and troubled and can they have lurker vision but that's never actually addressed later in no. it, you know earlier in the movie later in time it looks like caitlin can also see the lurkers but it's never addressed or made real right yeah you're just gonna you're just gonna have to fill in those gaps for yourself yeah it's the worst it's terrible so they start playing a game of cathedral which which melts and now we're back at ryan's home where he is playing sh uh, shadow lord with his little sister emma who hasn't mm -hmm. existed until this very moment 
Hey, how exciting. Mm, good. Emma, who immediately begins whining about him not playing a move. She didn't know that type of move was okay in Shadow Lord, the board game. And uh, and then later, when they're watching Night of the Living Dead, which was probably my favorite part of this movie, mm. um, uh, she starts whining because someone is at the window. Yeah. Yeah. Here it comes. Yep. And so they start, they spend way too much time looking out windows and wondering if someone is outside until yeah. finally time travel Nate breaks into the home. And he is disgusting. It's gross. He has doubled his weight in body odor and gingivitis. <laughs> it's so sweaty and just wet. Yeah, yeah. He has he has two days worth of facial hair growth, and it is just dripping with body fluid. <laughs> it's like 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 just the most ridiculously cartoonish black rings under his eyes, and like I put yeah. Nate is so moist. I bet he smells great. Yeah, yeah. He he smells like the alleyway behind Barnes and Noble. (laughs) 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 He's like talking about how he's supposed to be warning Ryan, but then instead of just warning Ryan about something, he's got this whole preamble to it. And instead of just saying, like, you're going to invent a time machine, he's like, you're going to invent a very important thing one day soon. (laughs) I can't tell him what it is. Yeah, can't can't say it. That might mess with the timeline. I don't know. He is not worried about fucking with time. Yeah, the rules of time travel are really not important. Yeah, and in order to do this, because Emma, Ryan's little sister, is so whiny, he has to grab her and cover her entire face with his giant, gross, sweaty hand. (laughs) That's right. Uh, We find out that he's been looking for Ryan for 13 years, which the math on it all still doesn't work out because apparently the the puddle that came through back through the time machine was 75 years old yeah i i didn't that made no sense yeah i don't know so it, that we never get to see 75 year old nate and i'm okay with that yeah cuz that we saw plenty of nate already yeah that would have meant the third hour of this movie oh god so yeah, he's saying all of this dumb thing. He says, oh yeah, he says that the lurkers aren't just watching, that they want you to make a time machine so that they can get in, and you have to find fight them. They've been looking for you. And then Ryan, uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, it turns out that while he was saying all of this, he smothered Emma to death. <laughs> that's right nate murdered emma yeah nate murdered ryan's little sister that was quite a reach yeah it's and also i'm not i guess this is happening before i guess this was another time dilation so this yeah. is happening before he'd ever met anyone else and so yeah so he nate murdered emma in front of ryan's face Mm -hmm. ryan goes upstairs he grabs the loaded gun that we saw earlier in the movie but later in time Mm -hmm. and he shoots the entire shit out of nate yeah he murders nate yeah he murders nate shoots him in the heart splatters blood on the gun we didn't mention that earlier when he pulled the gun out to go shoot his bully there there was dried blood that he tried to scratch off with his thumb from the gun that's right which means that after shooting Nate in this scene, the cops did not confiscate this weapon. Right. Yeah. And in the scene later, Nate has to unlock that drawer. That means his parents put the gun with blood on it that their child used to kill a home invader. His mom yeah. put it back in <laughs> to the same spot that it was when he got it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> There's it's still blood on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, just stupid. It's so dumb. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so dumb. So he shoots Nate, the gun, the blood. The last words that Nate says is, I'll always be here. Remember. And then he dies. <laughs> Thank God he dies. Yeah, it it is triumphant. Yeah. He's so dead, so stinky. They should have had his dead body fart and shit visibly. (laughs) 
It is the best part of the movie to see date Nate die twice. Yeah. Yeah. In horrible ways, both times. Yeah. Yeah. It would be good if there had been any light in his eyes that we could see leave, but there wasn't anything there to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also how, how do you, how does he die twice? So it makes no fucking sense. It makes no sense. Like at what point? Yeah. At what point did he go through the blender and come out the other side of the time thing? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess they're trying to say that, at some point, he went back in time and if, and stopped himself from going through the blender, but he already had gone through the blender. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. We find out he's been he's been so he's been looking for Ryan for thirteen years, and he's like coming unstuck in time. Like that's part of it. Like part of his killing Emma is that he's like getting all vibrating while smothering her face, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he, but he says he's been looking for Nate for 13 years. Like, I don't know how he's been keeping time if he's unstuck in time. I guess he's just been like, you know, for Mississippiing his way for 13 years. Yeah, that made absolutely. There's no fucking way he would have any concept. Yeah, of time. 13 year Mississippi. Jesus fucking Christ. Nate is dead. It's great. <laughs> <sighs> Couldn't have happened to a worse guy. Yeah. So then it gets all wobbly vision, and then we get a full recap of the entire movie. A mega montage. It's just all of those scenes over again, like every time. And then there's one where it's the first time in the movie that we saw when he opened the box and it was empty. And inside the box, that it, it reversed teardrops water up into his eyes. That That was so bad. Yeah. It looked real bad, and that's happening while we're hearing a flashback of Nate saying, they manipulate everything! Oh, God. So I think the implication there is that every time he opened the box and it was empty, that it was actually the lurkers using mind control on him? Yeah, it, it kind of... I, that's the impression that I got, too, except that nothing's clear anymore. Yeah. Anyway, so we find out that, like, his little sister was the thing in the picture that he was also supposed to be sad that was gone. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's been this hole in the whole thing, but it doesn't have anything to do with anything. It really doesn't. It's completely <sighs> irrelevant. It's just extraneous stuff just to try to impress you with their mind-trippy time travel ideas that they're that they're throwing at you. Yeah. So then the fact that when it's empty, they're manipulating you, then also, like, there's implications that the lurkers were watching and had had to do with the box itself. And that means that the locket with the galaxy marble in it, uh, Orion's belt bullshit, that was them. So that was, like, something that they were using to control him, maybe, mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, or something. I don't know. We mm-hmm. zoom all the way back to the first scene, and and uh, Abner has a bomb. He's he's mm-hmm. you know an old jacked dude Abner now, and he <laughs> has a plastic explosive vest, and he's holding Caitlin hostage in the time travel room, and he licks her face again. Thank you for that movie. Yeah, he, that's something that he's been holding on to for his whole life. It just as disgusting as an adult. Yeah, and uh, and he forces her to initiate the portal's time travel because he says mm-hmm. he keeps he does that thing that we talked about before, where movies think it's really important to repeat lines over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, God picked me. This is God's will, and I am His messenger. This is how the world is supposed to end. <laughs> Stupid. So they do the whole thing. They start up the. Uh, fucking time portal and she's on the other side of the glass and he's saying this stuff and Ryan's all puppy dog face at her through the glass and then because we found out that this thing can survive an explosion of course it does he explodes Mm -hmm. the time portal that's why she's all bloody at the very first scene now Mm -hmm. she's bloody very first scene again great right back where we started yeah oh wait no back in there somewhere in the middle is we see the giant space eye thing again for no reason oh right yeah Uh uh-huh yeah just for wait yeah because we see the opening we see that opening uh special effects shot but in reverse essentially yeah yeah great yeah so what yeah and so it's it's ryan he's got he's got bloody kate in his 
hand he sees the fucking lurker in the corner whatever fine and then weird spiky tentacles start coming through the portal yeah a version of the alien thing that we've never seen and there's no explanation for it. yeah and uh he opens up the locket it turns out that the marble is busted mm-hmm. uh, and so of course the logical conclusion the thing that you would do if you are ryan is he jumps into the portal yeah sure i mean why not yeah <laughs> i mean what you know we're we're completely un, un uncharted uh uh, idiot territory now so let's just go for it yeah so he jumps in he wakes up <laughs> i guess was he he's in the fucking graveyard again right i guess he's he's, he's in some torched forest where all the trees are like b- burned out yeah it's all fucked up and he finds the box and he opens it it has a piece of paper inside that's folded up he unfolds it and it says remember oh god by the way, when he reaches for the box, he needs hand lotion really bad. <laughs> His skin is so dry. Yeah, yeah, it, it's disgusting. It, it, thank you, high definition camera and terrible lighting. <laughs> terrible lighting and no, no lotion for Mister Ashy Hand. <laughs> yeah, get get that man some Vaseline. <laughs> um, so he opens it up. It says "Remember," which is you know that thing. Remember that thing. Mm-hmm. Remember. Nah. And uh, then he vibrasplodes and travels through hyperspace while triumphant music plays. And the movie's God. over. Uh, and, and what did they play for the closing song? Garbage. <laughs> the band Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> How perfect. Good. As I saw in the subtitles, it just said garbage, and then it started playing the song, and I was like, excellent. So, what the fuck? I, I could not begin to answer what the fuck. I have no idea what happened in the end. I just, I'd lost all hope for, like, understanding anything. It was so stupid, I didn't even want to try. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, like... It held a thread together, and I I do I I agree. There's I've seen reviews where uh, they talk about how this movie is the type of movie that people that like it are the kind of people that say, "Oh, you just didn't get it." Yeah, this is a really smart person's movie. Yeah, that's that's a cover for it's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's it's an entire turd hole. That's what people say when they know it's bad. You just didn't get it. Yeah, you you, no, you weren't it. following it along. Yeah. It's so the problem bad. is, yeah, I mean, you you know, you've got all these, you know, basically these guys invent this time thing. You're jumping all over in time. This guy has memory issues. He's been traumatized by events in his past, one of which gets completely short shrift, his, the death of his father, which just gets pushed aside. He might as well have never even had a father. It's it's a, there's so many things in this that are just like these dead ends that that don't add to the story in any way. And then you get to the the end, and all of a sudden they want to condense this alien narrative as if it fucking matters in some way. It really doesn't. Yeah, they just they're not they're not even scary for three quarters of the film. They they seem to back away at any chance they have to do something. And then Bill explains that they're harmless, but it turns out they're not harmless. But by the by that point, you don't even fucking care anymore. Yeah. Yep. And it and it doesn't matter. It's not like he was building a school of like lurker students. It was yeah. it, like it, it, there was. I don't know. I I don't know. Yeah, and after a childhood like that of seeing all these things, why would you keep going with this fucking experiment, knowing full well that first everything you send through the thing gets either liquefied or you can't get rid of the fucking thing, like Nate. So why would you like? <laughs> Why in God's name would you keep trying to operate this fucking thing? Yeah, it's uh, it's real bad. It's real dumb. I feel like Gus watched it and he was like, whoa, I'm amazing. <laughs> and I really feel like that ending where it's just it's just Ryan flying through hyperspace. I feel like that's Gus's way of telling us that there's going to be a sequel. Oh yeah. It's like, oh man, I'm gonna make so much on Kickstarter for the sequel. Oh my god. 
Wait till I come back, bigger and better. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get what that other guy, Sam Smith, or whatever, and and I'm gonna get so many atheists to be in the sequel. <laughs> so fucking we have a much longer debate scene. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It so it was terrible. Yeah, it was. It's possibly the worst. I, I, uh, yeah. I, I mean, like I said earlier, I could see this being like a, a cult following movie, not because it's so good, but because it's so enjoyable to mock. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I guess the people that would like this are are people who, you know, do kind of nerd out about time travel and stuff. And they don't, they're not really that concerned about whether or not the acting is good. It just needs to get the, the point across. But does and the it? acting, but, but. Uh, yeah, well, that's it. Doesn't is if you're asking me. Maybe to them it does. Um, is the acting good enough to at least translate the story as it is on the on the on the script or whatever? Yeah, it's good enough to do that. But I mean, anybody can read lines. You know, I mean, the the emotional impact which they try really hard. Oh yeah, to make it you know to make it seem like it's you know intense it just there isn't any yeah yeah there's there's no emotional weight to this movie and this movie is very concerned with emotional weight like a, the plot is centered around these big impact emotional moments that do not exist yeah this guy i you know it's like this guy w- grew up watching you know all the like close encounters and and E.T. and all the, you know, all the fantasy movies that played on kids, kids emotions. And like you grow up and you want to try to put that kind of epic sense of emotional depth in your films or whatever. And then you you make this. It's just also hollow. Yeah. Yeah. It's insultingly bad. Yeah. And it. Yeah. So so it has that that uh, kids on bikes style portion of the movie. But. He also, yeah, part of his thing was, you know what, I'm going to tell this movie as a flashbacks within flashbacks, and it's going to be in reverse time. Yeah, And it just made the movie worse. As an example, like, say a film like E.T., you know, where the kids are interacting with each other. There's there's a an authenticity to it, even though it's, you know, it's a movie and you, you, you know, it's not realistic necessarily. It's there's there is a separation, but it's believable. You know, you can suspend your disbelief, you know, and, and accept that these are really friends or that this person is this kid's brother or, you know, whatever. Like they they seem to have established some sort of a relationship on screen. They they're believable for the you know, it's serviceable for the story in this movie. It isn't. You have nothing invested in these kids. You know, they're trying, but there's just nothing to work with. Yeah. You know, the music is is ham fisted and, and just just tacked on you know it, it it doesn't really follow cues it goes on too long any hope of it having any emotional punch is just completely diluted out you know it's the whole i mean it just makes every mistake that a movie can make yeah yeah if they had if they told it in chronological order where you started with a kid whose uh sister was murdered by a horrible man and then we got to see the kids like become friends and we didn't find out that we have to watch a movie with these horrible adult actors in it until later until after we're invested that might have worked yeah i mean there there were ways to, that that this could have been improved dramatically you know maybe just just even if the audio tracking even with their same terrible voices if they had done that live so that it didn't have this weird like giallo feel with the audio where it, everything is completely out of sync. You know, in, in those Italian films, when for whatever reason, Italians love to do that across all the Italian genres from the seventies, but it had its charm. There is no charm to it here. It's, it's nope. just off putting and it, it just makes it feel, I cheap. don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know, maybe, you know, 20 years from now, it'll become some laughable classic, like a lot of the the seventies stuff, but there's, you know, like if you watch a Mario Bava film, it's completely over the top and the acting is absolutely terrible, <laughs> but they're great fun. They're really fun to watch and they have some really weird scenes and some cool, cool gore effects that aren't believable at all. They're not, they're not even remotely realistic, but they're fun. Yeah. There's no fun in this movie. It's just, no. it's just brutal. No, it's only fun to make fun of. 
it is extremely fun to make fun of. Yeah. But like, if you just want to sit down and watch a kind of cool, you know, kind of Lovecrafty time travel movie, this isn't it. No. If you want to go to sleep sometime over the next two hours, uh, this is a good one for that. Yeah, it put me to sleep a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I have taken naps during this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry to be so sorry to be so harsh on you guys, and you know, but you you know, I mean, there's some interesting ideas there, and and you know, I just I don't know. The actors I thought were really bad, unfortunately, yeah. except for James Morrison. The kids were better than the adults overall. Yeah, I you know, honestly, whenever it was like kid scenes, I didn't nearly as often notice the unsynchronized voice track yeah uh, except with emma whenever they were like up close on her teeth yeah. while playing that yeah. board game i was like oh this should not <laughs> every every shot in this movie should be done from the nose up <laughs> it was it was weird because it was was natural enough to make you like expect it to be better if they had intentionally made the acting campy or at least where it appeared that it was intentional that would have helped but they instead they try to go the other way and make it seem like it's really you know this is very natural like this is how people are nobody's like that no no one talks like that no one acts like that it's it's fucking weird yeah yeah I, and really uncomfortable <laughs> like they're ugly they're 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 uninteresting they're not funny nothing they say is intelligent it's all just terrible yeah it's it's really bad. It would have it would have been maybe even better if Kirk Cameron had a cameo appearance in it. <laughs> oh my god. It would, it would have been perfect for him. Yeah, it looks like a Kirk Cameron movie. He would fit right in. Oh my yeah. god, Kirk Cameron saves time travel. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of tra- time travel movies, oh. well, let me just throw it out there so I can stop thinking about this this other movie. There's there's a, a film I, I was thinking it was Argentinian, but uh, for what I'm reading here, the credit it's a Spanish film, but it's called Time Crimes. Have you ever heard of that one? Oh, uh, Time Crimes sounds like a idea that I've heard of, but not a specific film. the The picture is a guy with like a like a burlap sack on his over his head. It looks like it would be the cover for a horror film, like the but s- it's it, Second Friday the Thirteenth movie. It kind of looks like that, but what it what it is is a a, a crime slash time travel film Ooh. and crime it's, travel. Uh, yeah. Crime travel. And as IMDB says in the little brief synopsis, a man accidentally gets into a time machine and travels back in time <laughs> nearly an hour. Finding himself will be the first of a series of disasters of unforeseeable <laughs> consequences. And it is fucking great. Oh. <laughs> it's really good. Okay, I, so that's the time travel movie you were referring to. Yeah, they they handle it well. It 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 makes sense. It has you know kind of like gotcha moments that are are funny. Like they make you laugh because they're done so well. You know, it was well scripted and stuff like that. You see stuff, then you realize later you see it from a different angle, and then you realize there's like interplay between the things you've been seeing and all that. Very well done. Okay. Excellent. I have not heard that, but I, I'm almost certainly going to watch that soon now. Yeah, well, we, we may have to do that one, but not. But I think we need to clean, cleanse the palate and get away from this fucking turd. Yeah, I will say, if you want to watch a time travel movie where you can nerd out about them doing it right, I would mm-hmm. say watch uh, Shane Carruth's Primer from 2004. Yeah, they definitely handle very slavishly handle the rules of time travel as accurately as possible. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit, it can be a little tough to follow, but it, it definitely rewards repeat viewings. Yeah. And it's also, it's not really a horror movie, but it's, you no, know, no, no, but it's a, uh, it's a uh, infinitely better movie. Uh, it's an infinitely better horror movie than what we just talked about. <laughs> yeah. And, an infinitely better movie in general, but it's, that's a perfect example of a film that really didn't have much of a budget had no budget no. and they put the work in and it, it rewards. I mean, it's, it's a decent film. Yep. Which intersect was not intersect is just a mess. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it could have been decent. The idea is there. It's, it's a, it's a well-tread idea. So they, it's not like they have any excuse for, you know, 
not having any sources to kind of, you know, look at when they were planning this movie, he could have done something original with that idea. You know, people do that all the time. They borrow ideas and do cool things with it. It, it just doesn't work here. Yeah. No, you, you start with the premise, uh, what if students at Miskatonic University built a time machine? That's awesome. And then everything went wrong after that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're. it's not like you aren't dealing with fertile material. I mean, people have been plundering Lovecraft forever. Yeah. And, and still doing it pretty effectively in different ways, yeah. you know? There's... It's, it's, we, we've seen the evidence that it can be done. Yeah. And I will say that most movies based on Lovecraft are, they, they tend to be shitty, but I would say almost all of them are better than this movie. Yeah. There's, I'm trying to think if I've seen any that were worse. I don't think I have. I mean, there, there are a lot that are real bad. They're like just real bad and unpleasant to watch, but, but just gloriously shorter than this and and not yeah. as insufferable <laughs> yeah. and there's even one with like tory spelling in it <laughs> and it's yeah the, the, part of the part of the problem with this movie is that it's extremely pretentious yeah it's very into itself i mean when i read that richard dawkins was the voice <laughs> of the computer like, if i had known that ahead of time i i probably would have just said i can't watch this there's <laughs> Because Richard Dawkins is absolutely insufferable. He's, he's a horrible man. He really is just a piece of shit. It's like, what if a really smart guy with great ideas was a total asshole and no one liked being around him? Jesus Christ. <laughs> it, it's real bad. It's real bad. And I'm pretty sure that if he could have traveled in time to see this movie before he agreed to be in it, he would have been like, ooh, no. <laughs> I mean, he his voice sounded cool. It was one of the better voices in the film, I guess. Oh yeah, he he sounded like C three PO. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he sounded. He's got that voice, you know, that worked perfectly for that kind of thing. It's ridiculous that the computer was supposed to be semi sentient because it was utterly irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, it had nothing to do with it, but it was. It had it had a, <laughs> a computer that had recorded every word that Richard Dawkins knew how to say that was relevant to being in that lab. So stupid. The rest of my life will be worse for having seen that that scene with Nate debating like religion versus science with the protesters on the steps. Like it is so horrifically painful, and he should have known better. He literally made a not terrible documentary about science versus religion debate. Yeah, it's amazing. <sighs> It's like, dude, were you paying attention yeah. when you did this? Did you did you even watch your own documentary again? Like, how did how is this the end result of what ha- what you've learned? Oh. How could you so thoroughly in, insult both sides of an argument? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe maybe it's on purpose. Like all of the talk about like what you know wherever they are now in afterlife and bullshit, and then that being his summary of religion versus science debate maybe he's like yeah fuck all you guys ha <laughs> <laughs> gus yeah, halwerda out <laughs> gus halwerda super nihilist <laughs> gus halwerda the empty man <laughs> <laughs> uh so john if you were to rate this movie from uh on a five star scale yeah where where would you put it i will give it um one star okay uh can oh, no, you know i can i give it half a star that's why that's mine that's why i wanted to give you give you first go so you weren't just doing the same score i did <laughs> <laughs> i'll give it one star because uh some of the effect the cgi was much better than i expected it to be and I'm really digging here, <laughs> and uh, James Morrison wasn't that bad. Yeah, and so and and some of the ideas, the I I, I actually liked the premise just fine. I, oh, I yeah. think there's I I think there's a good movie in there. I think I think Gus Howard had a good idea. It just didn't really know how to execute it. So I'll give it one. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, like it totally sold me on the idea. Uh, students at Miskatonic University invent a time machine. Fuck yes. Let's go see that movie. 
Uh, I gave it a half of one half of one star. That's one of on my little uh, in de- my little scoring thing. I have a section for whether or not I enjoyed it. That's where it yeah. scored half of a star, not because I enjoyed <laughs> it, but because I was delivered so much glee at the prospect of complaining about this movie. <laughs> Everything else is terrible. This is not a horror movie. That's another one of my columns. Is it a horror movie? <laughs> no. No, it's yeah, not not really. And it marketed itself as a horror movie, and it's not. And you can go fuck yourself, Gus. Yeah, it's really not. Yeah, it's not. It's certainly not scary. Like, I mean, in any way, shape, or form. Yep. You know, if you were four years old, maybe. But I mean, you know, anybody else would not be scared of this. Oh yeah, I mean, if you're four years old, then you're worried that Nate is going to break into your house and kill you. Yeah, I mean, you you know, when you're four years old, you'll shit your pants and be scared. Yeah. Because oh, you shit, shit your pants. These, these shit is scary. <laughs> What's in my pants? <laughs> That's correct. Uh, scary. Can I just say this that movie? <laughs> as we are talking about Gus Hall, Hall Werda, yeah, I think he may have actually he has directed crab core videos. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, he made the video for the band Fit for Rivals, the the, the song Crash. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> no, they all have skinny pants and fucking brush forward hair. Oh my god, that might have to change the episode image for this. I have a picture of Caitlin looking really unpleased at the bar, but if, I might have to throw in some crab core for this. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. I'll have to For work. Yeah, for work it has Intersect, The Unbelievers, that the the documentary, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then a video for a group that's it's age restricted, but it's a it's a video for a band called Damage. <laughs> and then he directed Crash for Fit for Rivals. <sighs> maybe uh maybe for bonus content for this show, we should review Gus Howard of music videos. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, this guy, Gus, don't make movies. Or make more documentaries. That one was okay. Unbelievers, that was great. Do that. Yeah, Do more of yeah. that. Yeah. Oh god, this Fit for Rivals. Okay, so he's done two videos for Fit for Rivals. The song is called Damaged. Oh. Oh no. Oh, it's it's real bad. Oh, it's a girl singer. Okay. And Oh no! <laughs> Is Nate in it? Oh my god! Oh no! It's just oh god! Yeah, it's bad. Well, they're not doing the they're not crab coring, but it's bad. Is that on YouTube? We'll we'll uh, yeah we'll put the link in the show notes for you. <laughs> so, oh yes, nice. Oh, there's so many nose rings. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> a girl in a straight jacket. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. The guy that made this movie does this. Oh uh, no. So um so that's one and a half out of ten stars. Um <laughs> that is not enough to recommend you see this movie. So I'm glad that our score <laughs> actually like solved up to our premise of don't see this movie. Don't see it. It's not worth your time. It's two hours long. Only see it if you want to have seen a movie that you can make fun of. It's, um, I don't know, less enjoyable than Manos, The Hands of Fate. It's it's less enjoyable than Plan 9 from Outer Space. It's it's just not enjoyable. Yeah, do it like viewing party it or something with your friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. And just make fun of it. Yeah, if you're, if you're drunk, sure, see this movie. If you and your friends are drunk... Uh, But don't do what I did, which was watch this movie sober and alone. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, me too. I did see the the watch it as a watch it as a group thing option. And I was like, oh, we can do that. That would be kind of interesting. A watch along. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. But I don't ever want to watch this again. (laughs) No, no. God, no. You know that their podcast where all they do is they watch the same horrible movie over and over again, and so every week is them talking about a movie that they rewatched again. Really? Yeah, there's like there was one where they just watched Daddy Daycare two <laughs> <laughs> once a week for a year. Oh, 
Oh, that's that's evil. <laughs> yeah. This is a good movie for something like that, that someone that's not us can do. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's just make that clear. Eh? We will not be doing that. I would like to recommend that other people do that, please. <laughs> yes, and we will listen to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll listen to you. I will support you. I will, I will Patreon that shit. <laughs> please do that. Oh, my God. All right. Go yeah. ahead. Find us on social media you can find us on twitter at loathsome pod you can find us on facebook at loathsome things and you can email us at loathsome things at gmail.com mm -hmm. and tell us what we're doing wrong yeah to and we will uh we will <laughs> listen to it yeah rate and review if you don't mind uh it always helps it it you know, it increases the profile and more people will find out about the show. Yeah, give us five stars, whether or not you think we deserve it. <laughs> That's right. And uh, also be careful out there. Don't watch Intersect. Don't watch Intersect. Uh, and But if you do, uh, go check out Abe Ruthless's IMDb page because there's a picture of him in um, what looks like he was in some sort of band. Oh, God. Is it a crab core band? <laughs> no, they look like the horrors or one of those types. Oh, good. Like the horrors meet L.A. guns with the tight pants and the... Oh, God. Oh, it's so bad. Unfortunate. Yeah, all those tattoos are real. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, he was in an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Nice. Was he really? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, he was in two episodes of Two Broke Girls. Wow. Yeah. One uncredited and the other credit only. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, before this movie, he hadn't worked in, uh, uh, he has no credits until 2012. Wow. Yeah. Pulled out of retirement to make this. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>